Matea. Bertolucci. It's good possession from Tunisia. Overhead by Monset. This is Chikawi, though. Now Wabi Kazri. Chikawi. One white shirt, though, in that penalty area for Chikawi. Don't seem to get the numbers into the box that Kate Verdi do when they're on the attack, Tunisia. For some reason, they've got just every time, it, well, like Saihi. you said, it's yeah. It seemed to be just one play in the box and uh, just a lack of quality. That was just, I don't know if it's fatigue, but you can't say it's just 23 minutes going, so just a lack of quality there. No, it's hot, but it's not that hot. No. Taking the evening as well. Pogina over the goal kick. Nothing impressive is the, the rotation of the forward line as well up there for Kate Verdi. Kuka Janini held and Babanko all switching around, making it really awkward for Tunisia defensively. Qualified unbeaten Tunisia, four wins and two draws from their six games, a point ahead of Senegal. Egypt finished third in that group and failed to qualify again. Botswana, who have previously qualified for this tournament, were fourth. But four clean sheets in those six games, they conceded just two goals. And his aside, as George Leakins was referring to in that interview that we saw before kickoff that doesn't like to give too much away. Kent Verdi's fluid forward line, though, will be a real test for them this evening. Natter. Malou. Two of them just passing it between themselves at the moment, but they do keep possession here. Tunisia. This is Ben Youssef. Now the ball over the top. They have that option as well because there's plenty of pace in the Cape Verde attack. Yeah, you've got the likes of. Uh Cook up front and Giannini up front, so I think now it's for both teams just like a bit of quality and just being patient. I know they want to go forward as quick as possible, but in, in this type of tournament, you need to be patient and keep control of the ball, and, and eventually, um, you'll create chances. It's certainly an intense competition, isn't it? Three matches in eight days in the group stages. Out stage two, the quarters, the semis, and the final. Six matches between now and the 8th of February to lift the Africa Cup of Nations. But I don't think it's ever been such an open tournament. There is no clear favourite, is there, this time around? Exactly. I mean, on paper, as we, as we spoke before, we said Ivory Coast. Uh, we've been saying this for the last couple of years, they should win it, but. Uh, We've been proven wrong so many times. Um, from from my experience and from my memories from playing in African Nations Cup, the hardest part is just dealing with the conditions. Um, the football part is the easiest, because uh, you're coming from Europe and come from a club where you don't have probably the, the pitches, everything nice and everything is cut, and you have to deal with just very very hard conditions. And once you able to do that, then well, here's Malou in behind, flag up for offside. Yeah, you mentioned the pitches. This one was only laid a, a few weeks ago, and there was genuine concern that it might cut up once the matches came thick and fast on it. But it doesn't look too bad, does it? Oh, it considering good. this is the second match of the day. Exactly. And if players, as soon as, as soon as you can deal with stuff like that, and you, your mind is, you get to play with the wrong, right mindset, then you can have a long and good tournament. But uh, it's, it's having to cope with that. The food. Some players are away from home, away from the comfort zone, and. I think that's the hardest part. 
Yusuf's header. Tunisia certainly had uh, one or two problems in the, the build-up to this game. They spent their first night in Abebeyin without any electricity in their accommodation. The grass, by the way, for this tournament has been imported from Spain. And apparently would normally have months to bed in, but just 30 days. No goals. 28 minutes gone. Fernando Varela's header, the closest that we've had to a breakthrough, and that came in the first minute. Babanko, though, over this free kick for them. Solid header away, though. Only as far as Stopira. Flag up for a foul. It's a bit of a battle out there at the moment. There's nothing into in between them at the moment that you can say, you know, which one is the better team at the moment. It's just like I said, it's it's always like this the first game. Tunisia, a nation who know what it takes to host an Africa Cup of Nations three times. They've hosted it 65, 94, and 2004. 1994, they mucked a white from the history books. They were knocked out in the group stages, which didn't go down at all well with the local fans. Here's Halden. Janini is in the centre. Halden picks out Janini, who can't pick out the back of the net. Madlauti in the end with an all too comfortable save. It's a poor finish from Janini. Terrific break, though. Oh, I mean, Halden does well, yeah. I thought the ref might, thought he might go down but from, from getting the kick there from the initial defender, but he, he's honestly stayed on his feet. And he does what you expect him to do, he puts it in the, in the box, but Giannini uh, hits a target but doesn't get enough on it, and uh, another chance must there for, uh, for Cape Verde. Sheena clears. Well, the two big chances have gone the way of Cape Verde. Now they have a free kick. Stopira takes it quickly to Babanko. A terrific story, Kate Verdi's rise to prominence in the last few years on the African continent. You know, Rocha to Carlitos. And that's woeful. Cousin of Manchester United's nanny, Carlitos. His cousin would have been a better cross in than that. <laughs> I think nanny would have probably taken him on there, 1v1. Didn't they? I think Eldon does brilliant there. He stays on his feet. And he puts in a good cross here. Janine has got to do much better there. See what he was trying to do? He was trying to sweep it in, wasn't he? But he just didn't get the connection. Yeah. Oh, Aguas, though, appreciating the breakaway. But here's a chance for Tunisia at the other end. And Vojnina has done brilliantly. Oh, the keeper was brave there. Kalu. The flag has stayed down, but Kalu has overhit it. Halden's quick, but stood no chance of getting on the end of that. A puff of the cheeks. Not played too much football this season, Halden. Just two appearances for Sporting in the Portuguese top flight. He's been on form, though, for Cape Verde. Four goals in his last five internationals. Scored in that 2-0 win against Tunisia at the 2014 World Cup qualifiers. That result I'm talking about that was overturned. Here's Varela. I mean, that's shocking, isn't it? How can the officials make a mistake like that? They know he's banned oh. for four matches, and it's it's cost them a place in the final round of qualifying for the World Cup. Um, <laughs> I've got so many stories I could say. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I think I might need my lawyer to, if I want to carry on now. <laughs> We've only but got yeah. another hour. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it, yeah, like you said, it's shocking. It's, it should not happen. I mean, it's it's, it's the major tournament and stuff. Uh, it's just it's surely the player himself <laughs> should know as well. <laughs> I wouldn't. Yeah, you, I wouldn't. Yeah, put it that far. Players, we just tend to concentrate on the football. <laughs> Anything else after that is a miracle. It's Kazri. 
mean, it's one thing missing a penalty to get your team knocked out of the World <laughs> Cup, but playing when you shouldn't be playing. <laughs> Carlitos. Kalu runs it out of play. Throw for Tunisia. Chikawi. It's one of the targets for Cape Verde is to make it to a World Cup tournament. <laughs> so competitive now, though, the, the CAF region. Every coast on paper, of course, the so-called golden generation have failed to deliver. The great Cameroonian teams and the Nigerian teams, the Super Eagles and the the mid 90s there's there's no team quite like that at the moment in oh, africa no i mean the, the, the only team that comes close was obviously ivory coast because at the time they had didier drop where they had like you know yeah and all these guys and i mean just on paper you thought you got no chance beating them but uh for some reason things hasn't gone their way um, and one or two of that generation now stepping down from the international scene mm -hmm. and it's there's a few younger players coming through now, isn't there, in the Ivory Coast team? I would hope there's an opportunity for these young players to, to take the opportunity and show, show the ability. But um, and no, there's no better tournament than you, as a young African player to, to demonstrate or show your skills um, than playing in the African Nations Cup. Free kick for Tunisia. Abdenor over it. Over 10 minutes remaining in the first half in Abebeyan. Already today, Zambia and Democratic Republic of Congo have shared a 1-1 draw. It's Chikawi. The incentive here to go to the top of the group for the winners of this game. Carlitos wins it. Heldon. Denor after this, he's got there, the centre-back. Wasn't a bad ball in either, Vojina claims it. But again, just the one white shirt in that Cape Verde And that's the defender, Abdenor, showing a bit of desire there, getting a good cross, and if you look at the reaction from his teammates in the boxes, if they maybe had the same desires in, they would have probably gotten the end of that cross. Here's Giannini. Oh, it's a poor ball from Giannini. It's a poor effort if he's going for goal, it's an even worse ball if he's trying to set it up for Kuka. Had two great chances. This is Giannini. a good ball again from Babanko. Janini's got to wrap his foot around here. For me, it's, it's, it's got to be a whip around, and he tries to just to clip it up, and it's got to be a whip across the box between defenders and then the goalkeeper, which is the worst ball as a defender. They're getting in good positions, but just the final pass at the moment. Yeah, they're certainly looking the, the more likely side to get the breakthrough, Kate Birdie. Here's Gege. Giannini. Heldon. He's a real live wire on this near side, Heldon. Not too high with the cross, though, for Kuka. Again, good play from Cape Verde, getting the ball to the final third and just that final pass. Just lack a bit of quality at the moment. I have to say again, I like Bobanko, number five, the captain. Um, just the way he just moves the ball about and shares it in finds that, that, that killer pass. He's been his whole career playing in Portugal. Slips through the middle towards Halden, who's taken down. Oh, I thought that would have been... Uh, well, I think he's given it right on me. the edge of the penalty area. That looked more of a penalty for me. Goodness me. Well, I think the Cape Verdean players are suggesting that was inside the area. <laughs> The Tunisian players standing their ground. We'll have to see the replay, but from. But that looked penalty for me. There's a clear foul on Heldon. The, the only question was, is where is it? And 
Well, he's given it right on the line, which is a disadvantage, really, for Cape Verde, isn't it? And it's, it's got to be a booking as well. Good run here from Eldon. It's a lovely ball. Oof. The tackle's made outside, and he, yeah. he, he, I have to say the ref's done well there. But yes. <laughs> put my hands up to the ref. He's done well. But then, does he book? Does he book a defender? Does he? Because we haven't seen a yellow card yet. Good run from uh, Halvin there. I think a suggestion maybe of red, but maybe Abdenor was was close enough. To yeah, I have to say it's got to be yellow or something, but we haven't seen a booking yet. And the yellow card still hasn't come out. This is almost too close, isn't it? This free kick. Got to get it up and down and over the wall. Probably say this favours more left footer like Babanko. It looks like the player's got the, the ability to get it up and down now. Maybe just one where the centre back puts a foot through it and it finds a gap <laughs> in the wall. Eldon is there. Fernando Varela may fancy his chances as well with the log run up. It is Babanko. And it is straight into the wall, although they haven't got it away, oh. Tunisia. And it's just squeezed past the post. I'm trying to think how he made the target do this. Unbelievable. They're asking for a penalty, but there's not a penalty. All he's got to do is hit the target. Oh, he's missed oh, he's got, it. Yeah, he's got it. It was like pinball in the Tunisia <laughs> penalty area. And he's looking. Penalty there as well. It, no. Now what it definitely was was a corner. <laughs> and a goal kick has been given. Five minutes to half time. Nil nil. But it's certainly been eventful. Cape Verde will be scratching their heads as to why they're not in front. Had some great chances. Giannini. Give a couple of misses. Varela with that thumping header inside the first minute. And now, really, Kuka had to score that chance. Well, Cape Verde, in order to gain this success, have called on players that were born outside of their country, much the same way as Equatorial Guinea have done, but I suppose it has to be done. It's a nation of only 500,000 in terms of population. Be very to compete with homegrown players only. McLaughty's throw. Wabi Kazri is in plenty of space here. Say he Seen too much creativity really yet from Tunisia in open play. Monset into Chakawi. Crossing again towards Chakawi. A good header by Varela. Back for Tunisia. Here's Malul. Played in behind by Malul. It was a good ball as well. And Chakawi wasn't too far away from getting a touch on it. Great ball. Just in between, just like control of the or first time hit, but I have to say, very good ball into the box. They're getting more people into the box as, as the game goes on to uh, Tunisia. Kuka. There's another free kick. It's a bit rash, some of the Tunisian challenging in and around the edge of the penalty area. I mean, that didn't all there. It's gone straight there's no, the yeah, of... it's just got to be patient because. Kuka's got his back to the goal, and that's the chance uh, miss from Tunisia. But Kuka's not going anywhere there. He's got his back to the goal. And there's no need for him to make that challenge. And this could it could cost him a goal. By it's another good position for for Cape Verde and 
Bradbury making absolutely sure they're at the full 10 yards. Another good opportunity in quick succession here for Cape Verde. Heldon, one of the players over it. It's going to be Heldon to take it. Driven in by Heldon. Cleared away, though, by Tunisia. Babanko puts it back into the danger zone. But again, the cross is over here. They could just get that final ball with a bit more quality. And Cape Verde have a real chance of winning this game. That's what's been lacking in this first half, I have to say. I mean, they've got in good position and just... That last third, just lack of, like you said, lack of quality um, and just composure. Did draw their first two games two years ago, Cape Verde against uh, South Africa and Morocco. It was the 2 1 win against Angola that took them through. It was Babanko. Nate. Ben Yusuf. Abdenor. No. Malou. Crossing down well, Kate Birdie, when Tunisia have possession. It's a free kick now, though, to the North Africans. There's that trip again on Heldon. I don't know how the ref, the ref's done well there to see that. He's absolutely spot on, wasn't he? Yeah. It's so easy to give a penalty. Here's Malou. Just amazed there wasn't a card shown. At, not that we saw, anyway. Back by Monset. Saihi, now Malou, played in by Malou towards Kazri. Cape Verde can bring it away again. Stop it, rough. Now Babanko, not the best ball back to Stop it, Varela has it, turns away from trouble, here's Stop it, well, they're determined to play their way out of trouble, and they've managed to play their way into it, Kate Verdi. Chikawi. Finally, it's cleared away. Header on towards Heldon from Kuka. Free kick, barely time to take it, and that is the half time whistle. So, no goals, but plenty of chances, particularly for Cape Verde, who were unlucky not to take the lead as early as the first minute through Fernando Varela's header. Tunisia have had plenty of possession, but a, a real lack of quality and bodies in the final third when in good positions. Cape Verde have looked the more likely side, but once again. Tunisia's good defensive record has held them in good stead in this first half. Half-time score then at the Nuevo Estadio de Abebeyin. It is Tunisia nil, Cape Verde nil. The Africa Cup of Nations from...